you guys, Katie here with Life in the Mundane. Thank you guys for coming back to my channel. Um, I post videos on making the most of the little moments in homeschooling, home management, parenting, and everything in between. So if those are topics that interest you, I would love if you just take a quick second to subscribe. But what we're going to be talking about today is Apology of Science. Um, it's the program we've been using this year and that we're going to continue to use next year. And I'm really excited to share with you um, what we've liked. So let's get started. So Apology of Science is definitively a Christian science-based um, program. And I love the fact that we can find good creation-based science. Um, books out there for my kids that are very, very engaging. They have curriculum geared from kindergarten to sixth grade, which is the Young Explorers um, science curriculum, and then they have their um, sixth grade and up through high school um, curriculum as well. I actually used their older curriculum as a high school student myself. Um, since I'm a second generation homeschooler and really enjoyed using it then um, with like marine biology and some things like that. And now I'm getting to use the Young Explorers kindergarten through sixth grade uh, curriculum for uh, my children now. One thing that is a huge, huge pro to this curriculum is that it is one book, any one of these books, is kindergarten through sixth grade. So I can do science with all my kids. They can do different levels of work, which I'll kind of show you here in a second on how that works. But um, I can do the same science for everybody across the board. I have four that I'm currently homeschooling right now that are of school age, um, ranging from third grade to kindergarten. But then I also have two little ones who are coming up that will soon be joining our group as well for school. So that means that it is a big deal to be able to do science all together. And um, basically the way they have it set up is they have a whole selection of books. I have five of the books here um, out of their series and I think there are two more that I'm missing. But that is because those are geared a little bit more towards the older ones. The way Apologia kind of recommends it on their site is that you honestly pick a topic that is most interesting to your kids. If your kids are interested in learning it, they're gonna get it. And, um, and everything in this Young Explorer series is something that is able to be understood by a kindergarten through sixth grader. That being said, they say that the botany and the astronomy books um, that I have here in front are typically a little bit more simplistic and easier for younger kids to understand and grasp. And then the anatomy, and I believe it's maybe chemistry, um, are a little bit more on the advanced end and you may wanna wait till the older years. That being said, if your kids are interested in it, jump in, um, explain what you can, what they don't get, you're gonna review again. They're gonna get this. This is not gonna be the only time they get these uh, these science topics so they can dive in deeper when they get older. Um, and then they have a whole series that I have back here of zoology books. So they have like zoology flying creatures of the fifth day of creation. Um, they have one for swimming animals in the ocean and then they have one for land animals as well. So this year we did the flying creatures um, of the fifth day. I actually did not know about um, the idea of starting with the astronomy or the botany, so we jumped straight into this. So I had uh, two third graders, a second grader, and a kindergartner, and you know, honestly, we did just fine. So I really do think that there's something to picking what's interesting to them. I laid out all the books I had gotten and asked them what was most interesting, and this is what they really wanted to dive into for this year, so that's what we went with, and they've really enjoyed it so far. Okay, so now we've kind of talked about what are some of the different topics that uh, they have in the Young Explorer series, and kind of maybe some suggestions on where you might start um, with your kids, but just to show you a few of the other things that I've really enjoyed about it this year. Um, I like the fact that they make it fairly simplistic, which again, for a busy mom um, of a big family, this is just absolutely necessary for me. But they have experiments built into each lesson, and they've given you, at the beginning of the book, items that you're gonna need to complete each lesson. Most of their science experiments use household items, things you're gonna find, um, everyday things you're gonna find, a few things you might need to go out and buy, um, but I like the fact they've given you a list at the beginning of the year so you can go ahead and gather that all up or you can look in advance and see what you're gonna need. They also have kits, I did not know this until um, this year, next year I will be doing this, but they do actually have kits that you can just purchase that come pre-packaged, everything is labeled and says, here's everything you need for lesson one experiments. 
here's everything you need for less than two experiments. And for me, that is gonna be really helpful. Yes, could I do it a little bit cheaper on my own? Absolutely. But for me, I am not a science experiment person. I, I don't enjoy them, but my kids really, really do. And it's not the actually doing the experiments that's my problem. It is having to gather all the material and figure out what I'm supposed to do and all of that. So to have all those materials already together will be a huge, huge time saver for me and will actually mean we'll probably get to do more of the experiments. So I like the fact that there are lots of opportunities to be very hands-on based, but I also feel like this year we haven't done nearly as many experiments because of moving, um, but my kids have still gotten a lot of information out of it. So I feel like it kind of has the flexibility to be whatever you need it to be for that year. It also has opportunities to use a notebooking, um, has some notebooking activities that you can do as well. They give you instructions on what to do with that. So it might be, you know, going outside and identifying some different birds or journaling just some of the things that you've learned in your reading, whatever it might be. They have those um, just suggestions within the text itself. So this is the only book you actually need is whichever book you select for the year. That is the only book you actually need, um, which is a big cost saver as well. But if you want additional materials, you can get um, student journals. They have one for older kids that's just, this is the botany one, so it's botany notebook and journaling. And this is the junior version. This is the junior version. And so this is more first uh, kindergarten, first through third grade, and then third through sixth kind of thing. Um, so this has more writing. This has more, uh, it has, definitely has writing in it for sure. But it also includes coloring pages, copy work, that kind of thing. We used the journaling this year and just didn't use it as much as we thought we would. Um, we have just gone to more reading the text right now, but part of that has been because of um, just time with moving. So um, we've done that. Next year, I think we are gonna try the journaling a little bit, and if it still doesn't work out, then maybe I'll just drop the journaling altogether. But I definitely think if you're wanting to flesh it out more, and if you have kids, that you know, if you have a sixth grader and you have a first grader, one of the great ways that you can make them do just a little bit more is by having them go through and do these journaling books on their own, um, in their own time, and showing their work of what they have learned. Also, again, if you have older kids, you definitely don't have to read this out loud. They could read through this and do a lot of the experiments themselves, um, but because of my kids' ages and stages, I definitely need to read out loud to them. So um, that's kind of, some of the things that I like about it is that they give you a lot of tools to do it different ways. They're also, um, they have the book on audio, so if you like to listen to your textbooks, or if you are like me and you like to do review with the textbooks on audio, you can get that as well. So there are a lot of add-on features that you can add on, but this is all you actually need to get started. Um, so there are a lot of cost options depending on what your budget is for science and what your needs are. Um, a couple of other things that I love is that every chapter is really small sections. So sometimes it's gonna be a paragraph, sometimes it might be a page or even a page and a half. Um, but it makes it easy where you can actually go through and just read what you need to read for what your kids' attention span is and their interest level is for that day. Um, they kind of recommend taking your time a little bit, uh, going through it in about a chapter every two weeks is kind of roughly what they suggest. Um, and that's with the idea of doing science like two to three days a week. So you're not even doing it every day. If you obviously, if we wanted to do it more so, you could go through it faster. There are some chapters we have gone through much slower. That is one thing I will tell you right off the bat. I tried doing this particular book um, when my kids were a little bit younger, around first grade, and when my oldest were around first grade, and it was very, very hard to get into for us um, because I picked the zoology. Now, if I had picked the, the um, botany or the astronomy, like was suggested, uh, that maybe would have gone a lot better, <laughs> but the first chapter in the zoology is going through all of the classifications of animals, so, and, um, and kind of going through a lot of technical terms and big terminology, and it was way over my kid's head, and it was very, very hard to get through that first chapter. I think that first chapter might have taken us a month or more just to get through the whole thing, and I was about ready to give up. I did give up when they were little, and I just couldn't quite get through it all, um, but I have revisited this year. It was still a little bit challenging to get through and I really wasn't sure how much they were getting, but by the end of it, they actually got a lot. They got a lot of the technical terms and actually knew what they meant and they don't have to understand it fully. They just have a hook to hang it on in the future. So when they hear someone talking about phylums or anything like that, they now have a hook to hang that on. 
and some information about that in their bag that they can say, hey, okay, now I understand more about this. So don't worry too much if your kids aren't grasping every single concept. I'd encourage you to just keep going, push past the first chapter or so, at least in the um, in the first book of the, um, the birds book. Um, maybe the other ones are different. I haven't jumped into those yet on my own, but I would say if you do feel like it's above your kids' heads, persevere at least a couple of chapters in and see how they do because you will be surprised how much information they're actually getting and that they're actually understanding. Um, my kids have loved it. They beg to do science. Um, I love the fact that it brings in, uh, like I said, it's creation based. So it brings in God into a lot of the pieces of it, um, explaining how God's design is perfect and how he designed each of these creatures or each of these planets or each of these flowers or whatever it might be. And so I really like the fact that that's weaved all throughout the book. So that is what we have been using this year. Um, I hope that's been helpful to you guys. I know this doesn't go over the older kids books, like I said, um, because we're, to, we're using the Young Explorers for our kids right now. But I personally have gone through the older books. Those have um, tests if you want to have your kids take the tests and answer keys and stuff like that um, for more um, more work in that. But I think the great thing about this is you can read it out loud with your kids. Your kids can do individual exploration. So when they're doing their notebooking activities, they can, whether you, again, whether you buy their official journal or you're just using a regular notebook, they can dive deeper. And so your first grader, your kindergartner might just draw a picture of what they learned or orally tell you and narrate to you some of the things that they learned while your third, fourth, maybe your sixth grader are writing a report on it or doing additional experiments. And I like the fact that there's multiple levels there for you um, to be able to go through. Some people do this um, more strenuously and they do uh, every day they do science instead of just doing a couple times a week and they actually go through two of these books in a year. Um, there's lots of options out there, but I promise you it is worth looking into. And um, I would love to hear what you guys use for science. Comment below if you've ever used Apologia and what science you like to use, um, which one you guys started with and uh, what you guys thought of it. I would love to hear about that. And I look forward to talking to you later. Bye.